Last week, we took a look at creating a DAO that would allow us to swap out the database providers without having to rewrite a lot of our code. Uh, the only problem with the code that I showed you is that you still have to change that code whenever you swap the database. Uh, this is not very flexible. But today, we're going to embellish this one more step so that all you should need to do is go into your app settings section of webconfig uh, and the database, uh, make the database change there and everything else will work. So here's the code that we had from last week. I'm actually working in the uh, address table adapters uh, abstract class that we set up from last week. And we have the uh, get adapter method here. And what we're going to do, we're going to delete that. And then we're going to go up here. I have uh, a code snippet that I've already written that I'm going to drop right in here. And let's just get things evened up here. Now, the, the magic to what I'm about to show you here is in this build manager class. So in the system web compilation namespace, there's a build manager class that has a static method called get type. And what we're going to do is get type is going to get us the type information for the SQL address table adapter that's in our app code uh, area. Uh, this is all happening dynamically. Uh, and then we're telling it not to throw an exception if it can't find it. Now, what we should do later here is actually check for the null value on T, but we're going to uh, assume it's going to work for this demo. And then activator.create instance of type T, and we're going to return that as the address table adapter. Now, the beauty of this is if I were going to go into uh, my web config file and implement this, I would do something like this. I would have the address table adapter piece uh, be a static string in my code uh, because I might have an address table adapter, I might have a, um, a shipping table adapter, you know, all kinds of different table adapters in my code. But I might have a SQL implementation or a implementation, um, and that's the piece that would actually be in my web config file. So we would go look in the web config file for SQL, Oracle, or whatever, and then prefix our address table adapter that we're looking for uh, in our code right there. And that's all, that's the only change we have to make. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, run this code. And it's pretty much exactly the same code from a, a runtime perspective uh, that we were working with last week. Now I had some people ask me about, uh, you know, do I take requests? So here's how I take requests. You go over to blog.dmbcllc.com. And you click the click here to ask a question. And you'll see. I have a form here where you can fill it out and ask me any question you want. Now, I'm going to tell you right up front, uh, I'm not going to do uh, kind of dinner, beginner level questions here. Um, so if you've got a question about uh, what is object-oriented programming or how does object-oriented programming work or something like that, uh, I'm sorry, you really need to go to a, uh, a training facility uh, and get the scoop on that. Uh, object-oriented programming is not something that you can learn uh, from a video or from a set of books uh, easily. It, it can be done. Uh, it's just you're going to save yourself a ton of time uh, if you just go to a training facility, uh, you know, one of those week-long things. Um, but if you have a question about uh, some, some higher level, you know, things that the training companies don't normally uh, cover, uh, patterns, practices, uh, tips, tricks, you know, how would I actually do this, uh, you know, whatever this is, uh, those are the types of things uh, that I'd be willing to uh, cover in these videos.